This video is about identifying, naming, and drawing points, lines, segments, rays, triangles, and angles, and identifying the union and intersection between points. So first we need to get through some geometry vocab that will show up throughout our units and year. Our first vocab term is a point. A point is a location. So whenever you see a dot with a letter by it, that is a point. And it's going to be named by whatever letter is by the point. So in this case, just A. A line is a straight collection of points that extends infinitely in both directions. So we're going to have a line that's really just made up of many, many points that has arrows on both ends to show that it goes in both directions. Let's say on this line, we have three of the points named. So let's call them A, B, and C. When you are naming a line, you need to use two letters. So you can use A, B, or B, A. Above the letters should be a little line symbol with two arrows. We can pick any two letters. So I can use A, B, I can use B, C, or switch it so it's C, B. Or I could use AC or switch it so it's CA. Additionally, sometimes lines will have a lowercase cursive letter by it, so you can also name it by that cursive letter, so in this case, the lowercase cursive L. A segment is a straight collection of points with a definite beginning and ending, which are endpoints. So in this case, on our segment, we have the letter E going to the letter F. So we can name this segment EF or FE. We could also extend it to add a point G. So this part of the segment would be FG or GF. And then our whole segment would be EG or GE. A ray is a straight collection of points in which it begins at an endpoint and extends it forever in one direction. So here's our endpoint. We can go in any direction. We're going to have a letter at our endpoint, so we'll call this H, another point J. When you are naming a ray, it's important that the name starts with the endpoints. In this case, it's DHJ. We can also have another ray that has multiple points besides the endpoint. So we can have this L, M, and N. I can name this LM with the one that has only one arrow. The arrow is always pointing to the right no matter the direction of the actual ray. Or I can name it LN. So the second point can be anywhere on the line, but that first letter must be the endpoint of the ray. An angle is created with two rays and a common endpoint. So the two rays are going to represent the sides of the angle, and the end point is going to represent the vertex of the angle. So if I have an end point here, here's one ray going this way and one ray going this way. So we could have A, B, and C. Now, when we name this angle, we might even sometimes have a number in it. So if we have a number in it, we can call it angle 1, we could call it angle B, or we can use three letters, so angle A, B, C or angle CBA. The important part about naming is whatever your vertex is, that letter must be in the middle if we use three letters. Now, three letters is a good practice to get into because here, if I have this with a vertex D, I can't use angle D as a name because I don't know which angle I'm talking about. Am I talking about this angle? Am I talking about this angle? Am I talking about the whole large angle? So if there are multiple at a vertex, you can't just name it by one letter. You're going to have to name it by three letters. A plane is a flat surface formed by three noncollinear points that extend forever. Usually when you see a plane, it's drawn like a flat box. So it's either going to be like a rectangle or a parallelogram. We have at least three points, so A, B, and C. When we name our plane, we have to use three letters. So we can name A, B, C, A, C, B, 
CAC, CCA, CBA, or CAB. The other way we could name a plane is if we have a cursive letter. So if we have a cursive uppercase letter like this cursive Z, that could be another name for the plane. Our last vocab term for now then is a triangle. So a triangle is formed by three segments with common endpoints as vertices. So we have three segments that connect and meet at the endpoints. So let's say R, S, and T. When we name the triangle, we have the little triangle symbol and then we have to use three letters. It does not matter the order of the letters. So we can name it R, S, T, triangle R, T, S, triangle S, R, T, triangle S, T, R, triangle TRS, and triangle TSR. We talked about some of these that do not have a size or something that can be measurable, and those are the undefined terms of geometry. They are used as building blocks to make other things. So the three undefined terms in geometry are point, line, and plane. We can use those in different combinations to create different things. So like for a ray, we take part of a line, or for a segment, we take part of a line. When we get into three-dimensional shapes, we use points, lines, and planes to create the edges and faces and corners of our shapes. Couple more vocab terms. Collinear means that points lie on the same plane. So if I have a line, with three points, A, B, and C. We could say that A, B, and C are collinear. We could also have coplanar. Coplanar means that they are on the same plane. We could have D, E, and F. We could say D, E, and F are coplanar. And lastly, we have betweenness. So betweenness is a point that is located between two other points. So on this line, I could have M, N, and P. Notice that between does not necessarily mean it's directly in the middle. It just means that it's somewhere between those two endpoints. So in this case, we could say N is a N is between. M and P. In number one, name the segments below. So here we have three segments. We have this smaller segment. We have one that's a little bit longer. And then we have the whole large segment. So the yellow segment, we could name with the two letters in either order, so I'm gonna call it AB. The blue segment, I can call it BC or CB, we can switch either way. And the pink segment, I can call it AC or CA, you can switch either way. Number two, name the line in all possible ways. So when we're naming a line, we can use two letters. So we could call this line RS or SR because it wants all possible ways. We're gonna write both. We can name it ST, TS, or we can name it RT or TR. Lastly, because we have this cursive letter here, we could also name it M with that cursive letter for line M. In number three, given the triangle below, name the triangle in all possible ways. So when we name a triangle, we have the triangle symbol and we use three letters. So we have triangle FGH, we have triangle FHG, we have triangle GFH, triangle GHF, triangle HFG, triangle HGF, so any of those ways will work to name our triangle. Name the sides of the triangle. So the sides are the three segments here, and we can name them using either order. We always use two letters at a time. So our segments were F, G, 
FH and HG. Remember, you could switch the letters. It's still going to represent the same segment. In number four, looking at the angle, name the angle in all possible ways. So we know that there's only one vertex here, so we can name it angle Y. We could use that number and name it angle one, or we can use three letters. When we use three letters, remember that Y needs to be in the middle of the name. So we have angle X, Y, Z, and we have angle Z, Y, X. So we can switch the other two letters, but that middle letter has to be the vertex. In number five, name the rays that create the angle. So if this is the common endpoint Y, we have ray YX and we have ray YZ. In number five, use the diagram to the right for the following questions. Name angle ARE in all possible ways. So ARE, we can extend all the way over here and down this side. So the easiest way to rename it is we can switch the letters that are the first and last letters. We can name it angle ERA. Also, because A and N are on the same line, we can switch out N in place of A. So we could also name it angle NRE and angle ERN. Part B, what is the vertex of the angles? Remember, the vertex always is the center letter. And if we trace our angle, we see that's our center letter, so our vertex is A. How many angles does W have? So W has this angle here, and this angle here. It also has the large angle if we put those two angles together. So W is going to have three angles. How many triangles are in the figure? So we have one, two, three, four right away, but there's more triangles because we can keep connecting them. So we also have five, six, seven, and eight. So there are actually eight triangles in that figure. Now, when we look at images, there's some things that we can assume and there are some things that we cannot assume. You can assume things like straight lines and angles, collinearity of points, which means points that are on the same line, betweenness of points, which means something's between two other points, and the relative position of our points. Things you cannot assume are congruent segments, meaning segments that have the same length, congruent angles, meaning angles that have the same size, and relative size. So one triangle may look bigger than the other triangle, but unless we have facts that tell us that, we can't say for sure if something is bigger or smaller. So using these, let's answer some questions about our figure. So in number six, B, C and E are collinear. So here's B, C, and E. They're all on this line together. So that would be true. Angle A is a right angle. We don't have anything that tells us that these lines are perpendicular. It doesn't have an angle measurement there. So we don't know for sure. So that is false. And angle B and E are the same. Well, again, there's no marking. There's no measurement. So this, again, would be false. part of our lesson say is going to be with unions and intersections. So union, which has a U as its symbol, is what objects form together. So when we have two lines or two rays or two segments, what do they create when they are laid together? The intersection is an upside down U. And this is where the objects intersect or overlap. So we're going to use a diagram to figure out what happens with unions and intersections. So in number eight, we have an intersection 
of line KJ or KG. So KG has arrows going in both directions and line FJ has direction. So we're looking for the intersection. So the intersection of where these both overlap with each other is at point H. In B, we are again looking for an intersection. So we have ray HJ. So that's starting at H and going that way. And ray FJ. So we want to know where do they overlap. So those two colors where they are both in the same place is going to overlap at ray HJ. In C, we have ray HK union. So now it's what it's forming with ray HJ. So this is forming an angle. So when we name the angle, we're going to use three letters. So this would be angle A H J. In part D, we have a union again. So what are these three things forming together? So we have segment F G, we have segment H F, and we have segment H G. Together, those are three segments that are forming a triangle. So we would name that triangle F G H. Remember, you can change the letters however you want when you are naming it. So now we are back to an intersection because it's an upside down U. So we have segment FG and segment JG. Those are going to intersect at point G. We have ray HK union. So what is it forming with ray HG? Well, now we have a line because we have arrows going in both directions. So we are going to rename that line KG as a line. In G, we have KJ, segment KJ, is intersecting with segment HG. So those two highlight colors never touch each other. So there is going to be no intersection. So this would be none. In our bonus section, we have triangle J, G, F, and we have triangle K, F, J, and we want to know the intersection. So the intersection is going to be this line in the middle that they share. So it is going to be segment, because remember triangles are made with segments, is going to be segment F, J. Then, using the same triangles, we now have a union. So what are they making? Well, they're making a four-sided figure. So we would call it K, F, G, J. We would just name it with the four letters. So in number nine, we want to name three collinear points. So we're looking for a line that has at least three points on it. So one that sticks out right away is these three points would be collinear. So it would be E, E, and S. Now, we could also use other lines, so we could use this line over here, and we could do D, L, and V, or we could do B, L, and V, or we could do D, B, and V. There's lots of different possibilities. Same idea with this line as well. In part B, we're going to switch that saying B, U to saying B, V, and we are looking for the union. So what does Ray, B, V, and Ray... EL form together. Well, they form an angle, so we are going to name it angle E B V. Remember, B is the vertex, so it has to be in the middle there. In part C, we have segment BL, and it is going to intersect with segment BE. So the place that they intersect and share is point B. In D, we have three segments that are forming a union together. So we have VL, we have UL, and we have VW. 
or VU. So together those form a triangle with three segments. So we can name the triangle VLU. In part E, we have ray, or sorry, segment EL intersecting with segment EI. So the place that they overlap is EL, so that is going to be our intersection, segment EL. F, true or false, another name for angle DEV is angle E. So angle DEV is this angle. Now, can we call it E? No, because there's one, two, three, there's too many angles. There's four angles at this place. So it's going to be false because too many angles have vertex E. So we can't name it E because then we don't know what we're talking about. In our last question, what are other names for angle I? In letter G, what are other names for angle ILV? So angle ILV is right here. V, or sorry, L is the vertex, which means L has to be in the middle of our names. So we can switch the other two letters around so we can call it VLI. Because U is on the same line as I, we can switch U for its place. So we could also call it angle ULV or we could call it angle VLI. Thank you.